Good morning and welcome to Trinity University and the SAA matchup to determine who's going to be the top seed in the crossover game here on the west side as the visiting Hendricks Warriors come in at 2-0 to face the Trinity University Tigers also at 2-0. Hendricks has won the toss and they have deferred to the second half and we are just about ready for the early morning kick. Hope you have your coffee, your donuts, whatever it's going to be. And we are just about ready for kickoff. I'm joined today by Brian Yantelson. And Brian, your thoughts on this football matchup? I'm excited for this matchup. As you mentioned, the winner goes to the SAA championship. Hendricks and Trinity are two of the three remaining undefeated teams in the conference, so it should be a good one. No better way to wake up on a Saturday morning than with some college football. So Trinity will kick off. We'll start first with the Hendricks office, offense. It's going to be Miles Thompson, Kip Van Hoos, Blake Hinton at the flanker, and tight end will be Connor Beard. Wide receivers Chad McGonigal and Colton Phillips. As, well, I apologize. I thought that Hendricks had won the toss and deferred, but apparently either Trinity had won the toss and deferred, and... Hendricks is kicking off. Either way, it'll be Trinity ball first, and we'll get to offensive and defensive players here in just a minute as we await the kickoff here from Bennett Ellis of the Warriors. And actually, this is Eli Brendine kicking off, place kicker. Ellis, and this one's going to be returned by Mike Edmondson. He turns the corner, and he's out past the 40, and this one's going to be coming back a little bit as a block in the back that was not needed will get called after Edmondson had already turned the corner and was basically going out of bounds. You see, there it is right there on the 30, or maybe that was the one on the 39, depending on where the official looked at it. And I... And I think from the position of the flags that we just had two penalties on that one. And it'll be first and 10 Tigers, but from their own 15 yard line. Yeah, Josh, with how football is nowadays, it's strange that you don't see a penalty on a kickoff return. And so starting us off, be just double checking. It should be Wyatt Messick's at quarterback. It is. And the first play is going to be a little handoff sweep over to Chris Stewart. As he turns the corner, he doesn't get much. And bring up second down and long. And Tiger. Offense led by Messick's. We'll see quite a bit of Tucker Horn at quarterback as well. And probably. A little bit more action as the spring season starts to come to a close of quite a few players as the next week's game will be a travel game. So for some of these players, it'll be their last game of the year as the travel rosters are condensed a little bit. And Messick will keep and take that one himself. Bring up third down and s looks like about seven. And we've already seen two rushing plays from Messick and Edmondson. They're the two leading rushers on the Tigers. So we'll see a lot of that today. Messick's looking to change it up at the line here on third down. Scoreboard's yet to adjust. It still says second, but it is third down. Messick's two-step drop. He's going to throw it up in the air, and Merrifield's going to go for it, and it is intercepted. That is going to be a Hendricks pick by Alik Taylor, a sophomore out of Star City, Arkansas. And it was a good play. And Merrifield almost had it there, but a better play from Taylor as he rips it away. And the Warriors will take over just around midfield, 49-yard line. So I don't know if I'd call that as effective as a punt. It's not 
terribly far off if they would have had that go incomplete. But nonetheless, a momentum builder there for the Warriors. We'll see you on offense for the first time. They're going to send out Miles Thompson at quarterback. We'll see what they have in store. First play, pass, wide open receiver, and they've got it down to the one yard line. Pass complete to Chad McGonigal. And the senior from Little Rock has put the Warriors in prime position to take the lead here early. He had two steps on his defender and just couldn't stay up in the on his feet. But McGonigal takes him down to the one yard line. Yeah, the Warriors are averaging 43 points on offense this year, so not strange to see them trying to score early. And this one's going to be spotted short of the goal line. No signal yet. Yeah, second down. This one will be in for the score. And Hendricks has the early lead just like that. Three plays. That is Jacob Wood, the sophomore quarterback out of B Branch, Arkansas, taking the direct snap and gaining just enough. Let's put Hendricks up on top here early. 13.08 left to play, first quarter. Extra point, sails through, no, excuse me, it misses, and that will be interesting to see if that is going to be a point that they need later. But the early advantage here for Hendricks is they connect big on the McGonagall catch. And we'll catch our breath, get the scoreboard adjusted for the first quarter, and be back with you here in just a moment. Feels like two minutes ago we just did this. Hendricks kicking off, and it'll be another return for the Tigers. Early penalties put them in a negative position earlier, and another fantastic run by Edmondson. As he brings this one out to the 40, and now much better starting position for the Tigers. Take another look. Little squib kick, taking about the 13-yard line, and Edmondson with a lot of daylight in front of him. And a nice little tackle to save about 20 or 30 more yards by Riley McMurrin. And so possession number two here for the Tigers. It ended poorly the first time, but like I said, it wasn't much different than if that had been incomplete and punted away. Tucker Horn in at quarterback for Trinity. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of points on the scoreboard today, Josh. The Tigers have scored more than 35 points in both their games after doing that just four times in 10 games last year. And we know Hendricks loves to throw the ball, a recipe for potential to have a big day offensively. And this play by Davis run out to the right. And he's going to gain a couple, and that'll set up second down and a flag on the play. Push it back. officials resetting the chains on the far side they moved the first down marker so instead of it being first and 20 the chain said first and 10 so they moved those back now it is first and 20 and we'll do this again Trinity 
Couple of penalties here early on, costing them severely. Didn't make any defensive penalties, but the special teams penalty putting them in a deep spot. And now this one, first and 20, and that's going to be another interception. Tucker Horn throwing that one in, and had he not lost his footing, that could have been a pick six. Trying to get the number, number 29 for Hendricks. And on the far side, that was Hunter Lawrence, Jr. out of Perryville, Arkansas. And right now, Hendricks awake. Tigers still sleeping. First and 10, Hendricks, 35 yards to go to pad the lead that they already have here early on. And a disastrous start for Trinity. Yeah, you just cannot afford to give an offense like Hendricks has any extra possessions, any extra yardage, and this is not what you want at all if you're Trinity. And one benefit is that this is a 60-minute contest. But right now, spotting Hendricks two offensive possessions here in the first two and a half minutes is not what Trinity had envisioned. A little handoff up the middle. Again, a couple of yards. yards on the carry a little read out play to the sideline that may have lost a yard a little pitch and catch to Colton Phillips There's no crowd here today but I can imagine that if there were a crowd we'd have the same type of silence that we hear throughout the stadium at this point an absolutely stunning turn of events here to start. Hendricks in complete control. Tiger defense, though, forcing a third and seven. And seeing if they can get off the field here. If they can hold Hendricks here, it'd be a 50-yard attempt from this spot. And pressure and a little pitch. And still moving. That might be a first down. And judging by the spot of it, it is. Fantastic job there from Miles Thompson, escaping the the pressure up the middle from Trinity, and then the little underarm pitch, finding Van Hoos, who's going to do just enough. That little sidestep there put him over the 25-yard line. That was enough for the first down. And you see Van Hoos, the running back there, but he is a great pass catcher. He's coming off being named SAA Offensive Player of the Week, and he had 37 receiving yards last week with a touchdown. Quick little play out of the backfield. That will be a, another completion and another first down. Just unpicked up there in the middle. And I believe that was Connor Beard, the tight end. Now Hendricks in complete control. First and 10 from the 13. Thompson's going to keep. He gets hit, but he keeps going, and he's down to the three. That might be right at the stick for a first down. We'll see if they call second down. They do, so it's going to be second and short. It's going to be six inches. defense who had looked so good against Austin College. The last time we saw them here at home, a little bit of a struggle. It's been a while since Trinity's been able to play. And the bounce out, Van Hoos is going to get wrapped up in a tackle for the Tigers made by Cannon Starkey. Last time Hendricks was down here near the goal line, they brought in quarterback Jacob Wood. But right now, it looks like they're sticking with Miles Thompson. And they do make the substitution, though. It's going to be McGonagall coming in on the far side. There at the top of your screen at the line of scrimmage. As they lost two yards on that last play. Bring up third and two. And they can still get the first down without a touchdown. And now 
Thompson is going to call a timeout. 8.45 left to play here. First quarter, Hendricks with two early picks, one off of Wyatt Messick's, one off of Tucker Horn. And they are set up now looking at third and two from the five. And we'll be back in just a minute here on the Tiger Network. Tigers break the huddle. They'll be looking for a stop here and try to keep this a single digit affair, forcing a field goal. And it is Thompson back out there for the Warriors. A timeout horn. And Hendricks with the handoff. Van Hoos up the middle. And that's probably good enough for a first down. And we'll see. It is, and that will give them a few more chances at the goal line here. And right now, Trinity just not able to answer the Hendricks offense. Well, they've had almost no time to react. You know, they've been punched in the mouth right from the get-go, that long pass on the first play for Hendricks, and it's gone downhill ever since. And who's trying to go to the left side, and. Tigers there waiting him. Harris Good involved with that tackle. A good look here. Actually, first to meet him. Good was there, but the first to meet him for Trinity was Agumatu, the sophomore out of Dallas, stepping up from the linebacker position. And second. To the, to the party was Jacob Munoz. So second down. Thompson's going to keep. And now he's going to have to throw it away. That's going to be intercepted by the Tigers. And exactly what Trinity needed. A mistake by Thompson. Should not have thrown it. He had a receiver open deep. But on the back pedal. Throws it. And that is picked off. You get a great look at the celebration. It's Trey King. First year out of Round Rock. Exactly what the defense is needed here. And just a, what a read there by King. Huge, huge play for Trinity right there. Hopefully that'll get the offense going. All the momentum that Hendricks had. Chance to put this one up by two scores. Make it 13 to nothing. Maybe 14 if they went for two. But not to be Trey King. Helping the Tigers, eliminating the previous interception. And now a chance for Trinity to march down and make this more of a competitive affair as it has been all Hendricks here in the first half of the first quarter. Yeah, the interceptions we've seen from Messix and Horn, uncharacteristic. They had not thrown an interception in both their games this year, so strange start for them. Messick's interception was more of a heave down the field that could have gone either way, more of a jump ball. This one complete, and that's going to be a great second down play. It'll bring up a third and short. Another look. Messick's rolling out to his right, as he often does. And not surprisingly, it's going to be Caleb Crawford who's come on strong here this year as a sophomore with the reception. Third, and we'll call it three. Official scoreboard says two. That's a very long two. Handoff up the middle. And that is Edmondson. He's got enough for the first down. They take it up to the 35. Tiger offense looking like what we have expected to see. Mixing in the passing and the running. They stay pretty consistently balanced. And Edmondson, who was a preseason All-American by D3Football.com, 
looking all the bit that he is as a returner, showing off the moves that make him such a deadly returner. And we've already seen two fantastic kickoff returns. One of them brought, brought back. The other one had set the Tigers up in pretty good field position before the interception by Horn. Now Massick's in his second offensive go for the Tigers. So those two will split time. And we've got a play clock violation. Five yard penalty and Tigers will have a first and 15. I can't blame that one on the crowd noise, can you, Josh? Not at all. Although you might be able to blame it on the wind noise, and we apologize if that crowd mic gets a little too windy. I'll try to monitor that as we go, but last game we didn't have one and it just didn't feel right bring you back some of the noise from the game. A little pitch out by Benson. And there's a flag down. We'll see if this is coming back or if we're adding to it. It was almost a 14-yard run. And I'd imagine it's going to be holding downfield. Or could get hands in the face. Nope, it's going to come back. The ball, that call was three yards downfield. Had a chance to go one way or the other. And block below the waist. Well, that'll make it a first and twenty seven and see if Coach Urban has anything in the playbook just specifically dialed in for first and 27. All the way back to their own 13. And we got another flag. This one I think almost as the play started. And that was called by the umpire in the middle. And we're going to make it a first and 32. Trinity penalties just piling up here today. Yeah, you add all these penalties to the two interceptions and not much right going for the Trinity offense so far. Caught by Stewart on the outside and he'll gain a few yards back. That'll go from a first and 32 to a second and 19, so 13 yards on the reception for Stewart. And if you can piece a few of those together, you can get your first down after a first and 32. Now the run. Edmondson shakes around, now he's got the sideline. And that is gonna be right at the stick for the first down. We'll see if it's just short or if they're gonna give it to him. They're saying first down. Nicely done by the Tiger offense, taking a first and 32. And you see this run here, and we talked about Edmondson pretty much all day so far. The moves that get him out into space and taking it for a first down, a 19 yard run for Mike Edmondson. That'll bring up first and 10 here for the Tigers. Davis going backwards and brought down by Adonis Butler, a senior out of DeSoto. A celebration afterwards and throw somebody down for a seven yard loss. The Tigers were able to get out of that second and 32 hole on the last chain of downs, but that's not something you want to get used to doing, fall in behind the chain. So now second and 17. That's only something you can get out of so many times during a game. Yeah, we haven't seen anything that allows the Tigers to put two consecutive first down drives together. And Messick, another handoff to Davis, and oh, going backwards again. That's going to be third down and now very long. Third and 21 coming up here for the Tigers. Another four-yard loss by Davis. It's not all on Davis. I mean, there are 
defenders in the backfield at the snap. Now we'll see Messick throw it downfield. They've got to get to the 45. And that's the other 45 for a first down. This drive set up by the Trey King interception. Now they go deep and just beyond the fingertips. Ryan Merrifield, who looked like he was about to lay out for that one and just beyond his reach, take another look. This one, that close to being an incredible first down catch. And down on the field is Riley McMurrin for Hendricks. quick pause while he's attended to and hope he's able to bounce back. 6 nothing Hendricks here on the Tiger Network. Two minutes left, first quarter. Able to make his way off the field, and that was Riley McMurrin. We'll see when he comes back. Tigers punting this one away. And that one will be downed. Not much further than where the Tigers needed to be for a first down. So the interception, a little bit of temporary momentum, but right now back to the hands of the Warriors. Take a quick break. Come back for their possession here in just a second. We are back here with Hendricks leading six to nothing miles thompson at the quarterback position and we have a flag on the field a false start for Hendricks. that'll set them back five yards as they start this drive their third of the game hendrix has had the ball for now over six minutes so the defense has had to work a lot for trinity and it's a warm afternoon here, so that could start getting to them. First down pass out to the outside. That's going to lose yardage. And a couple of players excited about their play. Campbell Miller in on the tackle. This is also the worst field position Hendricks has had. The first time they've really started on their own side of the field, they started at about the 50 on their first drive and well into Trinity territory on the second. Yeah, they piled up 82 yards before this drive started, but hadn't really had to go very far. And that one's going to be incomplete. Pass intended over to Blake Hinton. The senior out of Dallas, even if he had caught it, it would have still been about third and seven. And now it'll be third and 16. I wish we had more stats. The stat program still coming up empty as those of you following at home probably already see. Let's see if we can't get that corrected here before the half. If not, then definitely at the half. We are almost to the end of the first quarter. Thompson keeps looking pressure early I believe that was Campbell Miller and then they go downfield and that is a very interesting call and they're going to call pass interference I was going to say you could call holding I don't know if you had pass interference there but an unfortunate call take another look they were step for step 
Let's see if he gets bumped. I guess maybe they're saying he had the right arm. That's the only thing I can see. That'll no. give a third and 16 bailout to the Warriors. And it'll be a first down at the 47. And that ball sailing well over the receiver's head. So I don't know that you could say that was catchable at that point. Which obviously would not warrant a pass interference penalty, but. Yeah, interesting to see what they had in mind. Thompson keeping, running, and now sliding down. And poked out late. Thompson with the quick slide to the knee. And then he popped right back up again. I think if you're gonna slide, the ideal thing to do would be to slide and stay down. Because when you pop back up, they didn't see you slide down and you are already back up again. Well, the whistle doesn't come quick enough. Might get the late hit. A little bit of outside pressure forces Thompson to run. He's got room, he's got the first down. And finally brought down by the Tigers in the open field. Kennedy Stewart and Brian DeClerc on the tackles. You can see Thompson's an agile runner. Last week against Austin College, he rushed for 72 yards, so he's a tough one to keep in the pocket. And that will take us to the end of the first quarter. And to be honest, it's a fortunate scoreboard here for the Tigers. They find themselves down 6 nothing at the end of the first quarter. It was 6 nothing after the end of the first minute and a half. And disastrous start for Trinity. We'll see if things improve for the second quarter. The Cendrix fans want to keep this drive going. We'll be back. They'll be back on offense. As you see, some of those numbers a bit delayed there, but one thing that stands out, 47 to five on the penalty yardage. And I don't think that that's really a mistake. I don't think the stats haven't caught up to that. I mean, that's, that's where this game is at. Trinity, just way too many penalties so far. They can start to correct that as another flag comes in. Things start to correct their penalties. They've got a chance, I think, here to turn the tide their defense has started to shore up a little bit. And we'll see what the call is after a short run. Hendricks moving backwards quite a bit, so would appear to be against them, and it will be. Holding call against Matt Altrock. A lot of the penalties for Trinity could also result from the fact that they haven't played in almost a month. They last played on February 13th, and so and they've only played two games this spring. So overall, probably a little bit rusty as a team still getting a hang of each other and a hang of the season. The blitz dealt with nicely here by Hendricks. A little screenplay to the outside. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that for Hendricks, just anticipating the blitz on that side. Already past three defenders, and who's able to scamper down, pick up most of that holding penalty back, and it'll be second and eight. So far, as we said, just completely in control of this game are the Warriors. 
I'd say the only negative to their game so far today is the interception down at the goal line that has prevented this from already being a two-score game with an opportunity to make it a three-score game. And oh yeah, by the way, Hendricks will return the kickoff in the second half unless for whatever reason they deferred and took the win. As we said, I thought Hendricks, they had said Hendricks had won the toss, but maybe Trinity took the win. Either way, now it's Wood back in, and he's already got one touchdown, and he's trying to make it two. Jacob Wood, electric out of the backfield in limited action. Good job by the offensive line. Wood finding the hole. The excellent flow. Able to get that one down inside the 10 yard line. First and goal here for the Warriors. Low snap picked up. Now the run off to the right side. They'll gain a couple. And there's Caleb Williams. Tigers are trying to say it was a fumble, but it looks like they've marked it down. Tigers trying to come up with another turnover near the goal line like they did with their last interception. Uh, that ball was out, as you saw it there. They came in marking it down. I don't know. It did not look like he was down, but I mean, obviously we do not have replay, so... Yeah, and it looked like it was a clear recovery for Trinity if it did come out, so Hendricks catches a lucky break there. Yeah, the only replay that we have in Division Three is the officials can look to see if a play was – they can come back at halftime and, and check to see if a play that they had called targeting was in fact targeting and, and determine whether or not the player can re-enter in for the second half of the game or not. And that's about it here in Division Three. So Hendricks marches on. Third and five, and this was the spot in their last possession where Trinity's blitz had Thompson on the run and he threw the pick. We'll see what happens here. Another time he's on the run again, and this time he's gonna be brought down. And for the tackles, that's Harris Good stepping up, making the play. And it'll bring up a fourth down, and Hendricks will bring on the kicking unit Take another look. Pretty much happened all day. The pressure from the Tigers forces Thompson to step up. And this time Harris Good, having none of it, takes him down. Another big stop by the Tigers defense, bending but not breaking. And Bennett Ellis misses off to the left. And right now, if if you're looking for positives here on the Trinity sideline, it's the fact that it's only 6-0. Tigers are still one play away from well, one and an extra point from taking the lead in a position that, to be frank here, they probably have no business being in. But their defense has stepped up when it needed to. They've gotten a little fortunate with the mishaps in the Hendricks kicking game. The Tigers have every ability to get back into this game quickly. They've scored more than 35 points in both their games, and Hendricks allows 29 points per game. So not necessarily a stout defense. So we'll see if the Tigers can get going here. The carousel continues. Tucker Horn, he'll hand off. And the run will gain about five. I believe that was Edmondson. Yes, Edmondson up for about five. Horn's first go at it for the Tigers resulted in an interception and you know, to be frank, I guess the, the luck that the Tigers started having was on that interception. That should have been a pick six. And the defender lost his heel and fell down and was down right there. And then later the Tigers, with a defensive stand, getting the pick in the end zone, stopping and keeping Hendricks off the board. And so even though the thing's not turning out greatly as the run will be spotted up around the 29, so it should be third and one. Even though things aren't great, everything has started tilting towards the Tigers. 
I think the most important thing in this drive, of course you want points, but if you're the Trinity offense, you want a sustained drive to give your defense a little bit of time to breathe. They've been on the field a lot, and you really need to give them some time. Edmondson on third and one. He's got the first down and then some. Making a six-yard run. The Tigers are out to the 35. Make it the 36. It'll be a seven-yard run. And for those that were curious, stats are on. But we'll see if we can get them updated. They still show midway through the first quarter. Nine thirty, counting down here. Second quarter. It's Tucker Horn. A little bit of a high snap. It's been working. Why not keep going to it? Mike Edmondson up again. Six yard run, seven yard run. And why not? Try to find what works. Keep it going. It'll be second down and three to go. Not only is the running game working, but if you keep going to the running game, that should open up the passing game, some play action passes down the field. They tried that earlier, resulted in some interceptions, but they might go back to it if they keep running the ball consistently. And Edmondson this time to the outside. He's got a little bit of room. A little shake, and he adds another five yards after the shake. Tigers continuing to move it down. Edmondson will finally go get a breather. Take another look. Said it all game. Just He's got the moves to get open. He makes extra yardage right there. So far, keeping Tigers offense moving. He's been trying to do it on special teams too. A couple of penalties have brought back some of his big returns. Crossing midfield now are the Tigers and Davis with the run. And they'll go for nothing. Nope, negative one. And that continues the streak of negative yards rushing for Davis. I think the last three, possibly four carries Davis have had have failed to get back to the line of scrimmage. So second and 11. We'll go Davis again. And oh, it's just struggling at this point. Fantastic step up into the middle. And there by Mason Adams, senior defensive lineman. Hendricks right there, catching on to the running ways of the Tigers, stuffing two consecutive runs. And Davis had two carries for negative 11 in the first quarter, Edmondson. Four for 34 yards in the first quarter, and he had taken him down to this spot all on his own early on. Now Horn's going to be forced to pass. Kicks it outside to Davis, and he might get back to the original line of scrimmage. No, it's still going to be third and 11, and so the offense putters out, but this is the prime spot for a fake. Now Hendricks will obviously be aware of that. And if you're Trinity, defense has been out on the field for a while. You've got six minutes left. Yeah, I don't think you can risk giving Hendricks more good field position. Try to pin him back and make them work their way all across the field. Start thinking about playing the field position game. See if you get one more possession back, if your defense can hold. That will be a little pooch punt. End over end. Fair catch called for and made. Back to return was Braden Schaefer. And well, we can update you now on Miles Thompson. He's six of nine for 81 yards passing and a interception. Wyatt Messick, two for four for 19 yards and a pick. Tucker Horn, one for two and a pick. One yard on his completion. And Mike Edmondson, eight carries for 65 yards. His long was 19. He's averaging 8.1.
Miles Thompson with 27 yards rushing on five attempts. And on three attempts, Jacob Wood, 22 yards. And going absolutely nowhere on the carry. I believe it was Caleb Williams. I'll tell you what, some of the, the position of the sun this morning off the white uniforms giving me a very hard time with the orange numbers. I think that was Williams on the run. And yeah, they're going to say Williams rushed for a loss of four, the tackle by Jacob Munoz. So now second down and 14, Thompson from the goal line. Waits, now runs, and he's going to slide down to his knees again at about the 10-yard line. I'll get him back to the line of scrimmage. Make it third down and 10. A little design play there on the draw. Makes the cut. And then, oof. Another interesting slide there. It didn't look very good on the turf here. Yeah, you saw Jeremy Irving coming straight at him and about to deliver the knockout blow. Decided to take to the knees and not try to gain an extra two or three yards. Now Thompson looking to throw, fires it over the middle, pass is complete. Nice pitch and catch. That one good for a first down and Blake Hinton giving the Warriors a new set of downs. Take another look. Now Thompson hasn't had to do this much today, but he steps in and rifles it. And then just catching that at the Apex there, Hinton coming down with a strong arm. Great defense on that one. As good a defense as you can be trailing the receiver and then trying to swat it away, but Hinton stays strong. And a new set of downs for the Warriors. Yeah, you mentioned Thompson hasn't really had to step back to pass a whole lot, but on two third and longs, he has. And Tigers nearly get to him right there. He's able to find Van Hoos, but they would have been better off letting that fall incomplete. So it'll be a loss of four on the completion. But Hendricks has had a lot of those short passes, screen passes, but on that last third down, he fired it across the field. And on an earlier third and long, he, of course, drew that pass interference penalty. So looks like Hendricks has that in mind, that they're going to save those long passes for just when they need them. Second and 14, blitz coming from the right side. And well done by the Tiger defense. And you saw the blitz off the right side. That was Jeremy Harris, the junior out of Richardson, Texas. And he timed it perfectly. Just coming off the edge. And really just undefendable at that point. You've already got a head of steam coming. And he's able to turn that corner. Yeah, with the sack. lineman Kevin Douglas had no chance right there. Harris was already past him before he could even look up. So I'll make it third and 23, 245 and counting down. And I'd imagine if this is a catch of some sort, Trinity will take a timeout to stop the clock, force the punt. The deep ball, this one floated, and... How did he catch that? My goodness. Hinton again. And I think he's just showing just how strong he is. This one just thrown up for grabs. An excellent coverage. Once again, he just reads it, catches it at the top, and just rips it away. And Jeremy Irving... Unable to pull that one down or snatch it away. And Hendricks will continue. Yeah, he had two Tiger defenders right there. Not sure how he was able to jump up and get that one. And that one is intercepted. No, hit the ground. As Hinton and Irving collide once again. And thought maybe Harris had a pick on that one, but not to be. And after the 47... 45-yard pitch and catch. They try to go back to Hinton. Just great coverage by Irving. And 
Harris knew it right away. Boy, the excitement has really picked up on these last couple plays. Second and ten. 151 to play. And this will be another timeout. This one taken timeout. by Hendricks. So that'll be their second timeout. They'll have one left. And we'll come back here in just a minute on the Tiger Network. Hendricks six, Trinity nothing. We thought it was gonna be a high scoring game. Maybe we still have that left in store for us, but right now defenses have been picking up when they've needed to. We'll be back in just a bit. Under two minutes here, second quarter. Hendricks with the ball at the 37 yard line. A couple of big plays by Blake Hinton, making the reception when he needed to. And now Thompson rolls out, has a receiver wide open. That's good for a first down. And then he's this tight end, Connor Beard. continue on at the 23 yard line. That might be Thompson's best completion of the game. I know he's had a couple long throws down the field, but right there moving to his right, facing some pressure and finds the receiver for a first down. First and 10, Thompson back to throw once again. Scrambles to his right, and now he'll throw that one away. So the Tigers are getting pressure on Thompson. They have been for a while now, but he's just so mobile, he's either able to run away from it or he's able to throw on the run and find the open receiver. Yeah, I was just going to say, his ability to throw on the run has looked very sharp today. And so even when they've been able to flush him out of the pocket, it hasn't been a gimme that good things are going to happen downfield for Trinity. I'd say the worst pass that he actually has is probably the 45-yard completion that he just threw up. That thing hung up in the air for so long that it should have been picked. It's Blake Hinton just going up and snatching it away from everybody else. Second and ten. He's going to throw this one to the corner. And that was a well-thrown ball. And just beyond the reach of his receiver. Other than the first throw of the game that Thompson threw well down the field, they had been doing some short passes and screens and running the ball a lot, but... On this drive, he's really airing it out now. Probably has a little bit to do with the time left on the clock, just a minute and a half before halftime, but in general, he's throwing it a lot more. Yeah, and that one, surprising. I mean, it, it turned hitting around on that fade to the end zone, but it's exactly where you wanted to throw it. So now it's third down. Pressure coming. Steps up. No, he's going to step back and throw. This one complete, and... Where do they mark it? It's gonna be right at the sticks, but I think it's short. The stick, I think, is at the 13. This one's gonna to go to the 14, so make it fourth and one. And Hendricks with 70 seconds and counting down. Jacob Wood coming out. No hesitation at all, just going for it. And he's gonna line up with a couple of blockers, presumably to his right. He runs to the right. He gets tripped up. And the Tiger defense holds once again. And a fantastic job by Matthew Willis. I thought as soon as he took the snap, he had the first down. We'll look at it again. He's got the three blockers to his right. And Matthew Willis just coming right through. Hit him up high, which I didn't think was going to be enough. 
and then got down and took out the ankle. And the Tiger defense excited, and they should be. They have done a tremendous job today. We talked about maybe they weren't doing the right things on the first two possessions, but even with the two big catches there by Blake Hinton, the Tiger defense comes up exactly how they need to. The bend don't break. They've kept this a one possession game. Edmondson once again takes that one to the 20, 45 seconds and counting. Yeah, just an unbelievable job by the Trinity defense. Hendricks has outgained them. He, they have 209 yards on offense. Trinity only has 75, but Trinity only trails six, nothing. So they have to be happy with where they're at. Messix is gonna get taken down in the backfield. And a nice job coming up. We've said it before. Donna's Butler, 6'5", 310 senior out of DeSoto. He's been an impact player here for the Warriors. Nine, eight, looks like Trinity's ready to take this to the half. And presumably Hendricks will return, but we will see when we return for the second half. We expected a high scoring game I think we've gotten fireworks. We just haven't seen the end zone very much. Jacob Woods run from the one yard line to put Hendricks up after an early interception in the first two minutes of the game. And that's been it. They missed the extra point and that's been the scoring since we, uh, since we got started. We thought we'd see a lot more of it, but second half still to come. And we'll take a break. We'll rejoin you here for the second half when we return.
As we welcome you back, we'll take one more look at the first half stats. As you can see, the big difference is there. I think the 209 to 73 total yards, but the passing yards, 165 to 20. And then the penalties stand out, 62 for 15. And Trinity really biting themselves, not getting a whole lot offensively, but also going backwards when they got an opportunity. Six nothing here at the break in favor of Hendricks. And yeah, and I think to see who's going to be receiving the second half kickoff. Go ahead, Brian. I think earlier when we were talking about this probably being a high scoring game, I think we were counting on the fact that both teams have scored a lot of points in both their games, but this is something that we can expect from Trinity's defense. They only allowed seven points to Millsaps in their last game, and they're averaging just 15.5 points for their opponents in this season. So we could have expected that from the defense, but we did expect a little bit more from Trinity's offense. As the horn goes for the end of the half. Notables for Trinity, Mike Edmondson, 70 yards on nine carries. But just three completions, three for six for the Tigers offense. And then notables for Hendricks. Chad McGonigal, three receptions for 68 yards, had a long of 50. Blake Hinton, two for 64, and 45 yard was his long. And it will be Trinity to kick off. And 11 of 17, 165 yards passing. And 23 net yards, 37 yards positive for Miles Thompson. I've lost a couple on his runs out of the pocket, and that one will fall off the tee, which will prompt. I presume it would prompt a holder, but we'll see if they give him one more shot. I'll leave it up there. It is gusty here this morning. The winds last night about 15 miles an hour. And the gusts were pretty severe that you could hear it when you were indoors. So. Yeah, and the window factor in the first half, Hendricks missing an extra point and a field goal. This one more of a knuckleball down, picked up at the 19. And not going to gain much more than that. going to be Trace Knight who turns it to about the 25. Uh, the second half adjustments I think for both teams here is just limit the mistakes that you make. You know the turnover, the one turnover that Hendricks had very costly turned it over on downs as well but the interception in the end zone was a play that they should not have thrown. It was a pass that Thompson should have just thrown away trying to make a play but ended up giving Trinity a little bit of life and momentum. And then Trinity, just the penalties, you know, if they can ride Edmondson a little bit more, open up the run game. Van Hoos scampers ahead for about four. But then offensively, I mean, I think it's, it's not a question of what the teams aren't doing offensively. I think it's maybe more of an inclination of the teams are doing a lot more defensively than really is starting to show up, you know, than just on the stat sheet. You know, they're, they're making a lot of good plays up front. Both defensive lines have been pushing into the backfield on quite a few occasions. Be second and six. Thompson rolls out. Wants to throw it. He's going to get wrapped up and taken down. It'll be a third and long. Jacob Munoz there for the Tigers. And right there, Thompson wanted to roll to his right, which he has done all game long. But as soon as he had to turn back left, you knew he was in some trouble. The Trinity defense wrapped him up immediately. Yeah, not going to get out of the grasp of Munoz. I'm sure Coach Jeremy Urban talked about that during the half. Now it'll be interesting to see if whether or not Trinity puts on a blitz here. Third and nine. They've put Thompson under pressure quite a bit, and they do come with the blitz on the edge. Thompson under the middle, and that one will be caught. And a great job once again, Blake Hinton. Not only is he catching the ball and wrapping up and being strong, but that route getting just beyond the line to gain for the first down. 
not cutting that one short. They're doing a great job of holding on as Irving comes in for the tackle. Yeah, Irving right there was saying the ball hit the ground, but from our view, it did not look like that was the case. It looked like a clean catch. So two rough plays here for Hendricks, and now a first down run. And Tiger fans will be happy to see Cannon Starkey in the first year jumping in and making the play. It's north of Houston from the Woodlands. Now that might be one of the reasons why we've seen Thompson slide so often so early. He just got devoured there. Starkey making the the big hit for the loss. Thompson. He's got a receiver and a great job defensively. Coming through, making the play. Kennedy Stewart. Also from the Woodlands. Finger on that pass, otherwise that was going to be another first down pitch and catch for Hendricks. I'll bring up third and 11. A couple of first years, both from the Woodlands, making contributions here on defense. But we'll have to see another third and long. Thompson has been great in these situations, converting twice just before the half and already once in this drive. Holds. The immediate pressure. Now he's going to throw this one away. And that will bring up fourth down. Fantastic job. Starkey early. Getting in there as well. A gun run. Trying to defense on third down. They are looking like what we saw maybe in that Austin and, and the Millsaps games. Very strong. Very quick. Forcing you to make a very quick decision. Miles Thompson's made a lot of great quick decisions today, but that one, I, th I think he actually made a great decision there just to throw it away, set them up for a punt, as opposed to maybe trying to force that one and having it get intercepted, and then who knows where that one goes. This one, returned by Stewart, and Stewart fields it nicely, and I think with two defenders right there, not bad to get seven yards. And maybe the Mark him for six. We'll see where they put him to. They're going to be the 29 or the 30. Field judge says 30. And that's where the Tigers will start. 12.01 left to play here in the third quarter. And it's a quick entry now for Wyatt Messick and the gang. Back to the air. And that's going to be picked off again. And we're trying to find Burtness. And Hendricks. Pretty much exactly what we saw to start the first half. They're doing it again in the second. That one picked off by Jacob Brimmon. And this is just well read. I can only assume that Messick just never saw it. Because that one was basically thrown right to him. Yeah, Messick just does not look comfortable today. That's just his fifth throwing attempt and second interception. Has as many interceptions as he does completions. So once again, the Trinity defense has to defend a short field. This is how the game started, as you mentioned. Hendrick scored really quickly as the game began. run and Williams is going to be gobbled up. I mean Gunrun there for the tackle. The defense does not look like they are extremely tired. They've been out there for so long. They keep making plays. They caught up a bit in the time of possession at the end of the first half. It had been pretty lopsided but it evened up a little bit but not something you want to Start over again. You don't want to start with that lopsided time of possession and keep your defense out in the field. The last three possessions, they've allowed Hendricks to march down and gain some good quality field position, but they've held strong. And that one through the fingertips of Chad McGonigal. Fifth year senior, knowing that he should have had that one. 
Yeah, right there, Thompson going to his left again, though, so not as comfortable going to his left as he is going to his right. But once again, even despite the turnover, Trinity's defense has the opportunity to stop the Warriors on a third and long. And with their kicking game, this is likely not field goal territory. So we'll see if they can come up with a big stop and keep the score right where it is. Third and 11. Williams. Under pressure, Campbell Miller is going to get the sack. Miles Thompson. Rolling back to his left, and all he could do is wait. The coverage downfield was strong enough to hold. And Campbell Miller just gobbling up and getting another sack. That's the second time on this drive you could see Miller pursuing Thompson. First time he couldn't quite get there, but it was an incomplete pass. And right there, Thompson could not escape the wrath of Miller. I'd say the smart decision here from the 31. They're going to go for it. Fourth and 16. Thompson rolls around. Now has a little bit of running room. Now he's got a wide open man in the end zone. It's just beyond the reach. Hendricks will turn it over on downs. Nagonigan escaped out of the defender's clutch there at the final moments. Great awareness from both parties there. Just uh, even though that falls incomplete, what a tremendous opportunity play there for Hendricks. Between the big plays at the end of the second quarter and now already in the third quarter, we've had some real edge of your seat plays. And the Trinity offense back out, and it's going to be Tucker Horn again. The two quarterbacks alternating back and forth, so not a surprise. And Edmondson. Up the middle, I, I get the feeling that we were just we're waiting for Edmondson to break one to the house. It's getting so close now, 79 yards rushing on 10 attempts. Second and one. Horn will hand it off again and wrapped up but he continues moving forward and he might just have enough for a first down and they will give it to him initially i thought he's going to be wrapped up for a loss and then maybe just a zero gain and he kept fighting and he gains the yard he needs this bronc is a set of downs with the way this game is going josh can't help but think to last year's game between these two schools Trinity beat Hendricks up in Arkansas 20 to 17. It was close all the way throughout, and it's shaping to be that way again today. Flag comes in, Horn goes down on the sack. And wouldn't you know it, once again, Donis Butler. He's just making a living there in the Tiger backfield. It's a holding call. They'll decline that surely. It'll bring up second and 17. Second and 17, give Butler another sack. I think what you were saying about waiting for an Edmondson breakout run, I think Tigers are definitely gonna need something like that because they haven't been able to string together positive plays in a row. They got a first down on this drive and then march right back with the penalty. Horn hit as he throws, but he's able to get it out. Ryan Merrifield there to catch it, and that's good for about a nine yard gain, and that'll bring up second, excuse me, third and eight. And just great job by Horn to stand in there while he knows he's about to get laid out. And nice adjustment by Ryan Merrifield to catch the wobbly pass. Manageable down here, I would say. It's just third and eight. Should see the Tigers take to the air. They do. Horn rolls to his right. No, he's going to let it fly. And 
looking for Burtness, but I'm not sure Burtness has a chance to catch that one, even if he's up the sideline. So Tigers will punt this one away. to punt for the Tigers. That one sails over his head. He's got time, but he decides to kneel it down. I mean, on one hand, you don't want to have anything more drastic happen, but he definitely had time to pick that one back up and do something with it. And he decides just to cover up, and that puts the defense in yet another tremendous hole as Hendricks will once again take over deep inside territory. Time just needing 25 yards to find the end zone. And at some point, you just know Hendricks will break through for another score. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Josh. We've mentioned that they're averaging 43 points per game this year, so they're bound to break out at some point. Trinity's defense has held up strong so far, but we'll have to see if they can keep putting up a strong defensive front here. It's been three weeks since the Tigers saw the field. might have gotten a yard look like Larry Green in on the stop again still going I'll cut this down to a manageable third down and say six and the playbooks probably opened up here because like we saw last drive but their kicking game this is likely four down territory so really got two plays to get about six yards and who's using the juke button on the tiger defense to pick up an extra four yards Two down territory here. To the air. That's way over the top. And as you can see, the official right there, well, maybe it was out of screen. The official putting his hand over his head, saying that it was just uncatchable. Even if there would have been some sort of a penalty for pass interference, it would have been nullified. Interesting play here for Hendricks. Yeah, they're going for the field goal. About a 38-yard field goal. Yeah, Eli Brindine. And it's going to be into the wind, and that one's blocked. And was the play live? And so far it looks like it was, as the officials aren't bringing it back. Like, Hendricks just looked like they stopped on the play before it got going. Let's take another look at it. And Chris Stewart with the block, and he momentarily down on the field. That one picked up and run back by Jeremy Harris. And, okay, I keep saying that eventually Hendricks is going to break through for a score. The Tiger defense is like, no, no, we've got this. Let's just try to score ourselves and see if we can't walk away with this one, maybe even 7-6 if we have to. My goodness. I'm honestly shocked. How many shocked. more stands can they have? No, I'm, I'm honestly shocked at that decision to go for the field goal. Their kicking game has not been good today, and a 38-yard field goal with the wind gusting, like we've been talking about, just did not seem like a recipe for success, and you saw the Tigers take advantage, and maybe that's the play that gets the Tigers' offense going. There's been so many from the Tigers' defense, but maybe this one with a nice return now getting them across into Hendricks' field position will finally get the Tigers going. It's Mike Edmondson for 10 yards. He's now 12 for 91. Inches closer to 100 on the ground for the day. Messick rolls out, delivers that one. Nice pitch and catch to the far side. And out to, pardon me on this one, it's Ethan Boyer, number 31 out of Greenville, North Carolina. The sophomore keeping the jersey 
fold it up, barely see the 31 there. Assuming a flag on the play as the officials are huddling together. If it stands, it goes for seven yards. Now they bring in the field judge. We'll have to wait to see what the flag is, but this is the type of area of the field that you think Trinity, they've been running the ball a lot. Let's see if the referees, what they're going to say. And they're still not 100% sure. Illegal substitution, twelve men on the field with a snap on the defense. Back to the previous spot, five yards, repeat first down. All right, so it'll be first and five. Yeah, now especially on a first and five around the 40-yard line. The Tigers have been running the ball a lot with Edmondson. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a play-action pass down the field, bring the Hendricks defense towards Edmondson, and just throw it right over, and we'll see. Well, he continues to stay with Edmondson. Why not? He's going to go over 100 with this carry. And that's a first down up to the 32-yard line. I like, the, I like the idea. Eventually, that play-action play is coming. Yeah, they're, they're definitely right building now, for it. Right now, there's almost no need not to. It's Edmondson. Just having a monster day here on the ground. And I say that because almost every run he's had has just been going for 10 yards. Now, Messick's flushed. Throws on the run. And is Boyer finally going to get that catch? I took it away when they took the penalty last time. And he's got this one. And that one's going to be good for eight yards. So... Had one taken away, but he comes right back, and now second and two. And much like Thompson for the Warriors, Messick looks a lot more comfortable rolling to his right than when he's stationary in the pocket. That's where he threw his last interception. So Tiger's probably trying to move him around. A little sidearm action now to Boyer. He's going to have enough for the first down. And a fantastic block coming from Austin Burtness. That looked like Messix belongs on our third-ranked Trinity Tigers baseball team. Yeah, a little second base action, turning the double play right there, and you see Burtness just doing everything he could to keep the defender away from Boyer as he was able to take that corner and get the first down. Burtness kept out of the – or excuse me, that was Merrifield on the, on the block. This run will go for very little. A kind yard from the downkeeper. Merrifield top of the screen. Crawford just below him near side is Stewart. Instead, it's going to be Wyatt Messick still running, but a flag will come down. He's probably going to take this one to the end zone, but the flag is here. Actually takes it to the one. But this one's flagged down at the 21, and you got to feel this one's coming all the way back. Take a look. I didn't see a hold. I saw the Tiger lineman spin around, but did not see the hold. Either way, Trinity will be backed up. Eventually becomes a 28-yard penalty as they're back to the 29. Really unfortunate penalty. That's the first real sustained drive Trinity's had all day. So Burtness to the top of the screen. It's Merrifield and Stewart at the bottom. And they're going to go to Burtness. And another flag comes in. This one from the line judge. And now a flag at the end of the play. We got a lot of yellow out on the field for this one. Give them a moment to sort it out. There's a nice pitch and catch here from Messix. As you can see, the read option is he yanks it back out of Edmondson. Edmondson is like, wait, did we fumble that? No. This looks like I got my defend or my receiver downfield. So potential maybe offsetting, and we'll just do this play again. 
So it looks like the flag back at the 32 might go against Trinity, and the flag at the 11 might go against Hendricks. Yeah, let's see what they say. There are two fouls on the play. We have an eligible man downfield on the offense. That'll be five yards from the previous spot. And we have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct, number nine of the defense. It'll be 15 yards from there with an automatic first down. So that is Carter Weekly on the unsportsmanlike, and that'll be his first of the game. Unsportsmanlike will be penalized at the half a distance to the goal. Oh. So instead of the 15 yards after that, it's going to be half the distance. So not necessarily a wash. The original foul took Trinity back, and they bring it forward. We replay the down. And essentially, we're back to where we were before the holding call. Except now it's now a it's first, first down. down. Yeah. Yeah, but about. We're, but we're back to the 19. About the best Trinity could hope for. <laughs> it was good to see Messick's with the strong completion to Burtness, even if it didn't count. Like maybe he's starting to find his groove just a little bit more. This one he's going to sling out to Stewart. Bounces into his own defender that was, or his own blocker that was Merrifield. He's able to shake off, gain about four or five. I think it's six. It'll be second down and four. You know, I like the quick reads on these. Not giving Hendricks enough time to react. Take a couple of yards at a time. Kind of taking the focus off Edmondson. So if you're going to give it back to him here. Well, he's going to stay with the air. Off the back foot. And that's the second interception thrown off of a back foot today. Thompson had one earlier into the end zone. And second interception of the day now for... Jacob Bremen. And it's just, just not a pass that you want to be throwing. And, and not only that, but off screen there, Chris Stewart was uncovered on the play. Yeah, and three Hendricks defenders in that area were messing through it. And also a second down throw. So didn't have to force it there. He could have lived to have another down and you're in field goal position. A lot of good things could have happened if you just threw that away. We'll see what the defense can do. Hendricks in the shadow of their own end zone now for the first time. So a snap taken. And Hoos won't get much. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up second down. The way this game has gone and the way Trinity's offense has struggled, this might be the moment that Trinity's defense has to come up with their biggest play and possibly a turnover that results in a score if they're ever going to get on the scoreboard. This might be the moment. See that offensive line there of Campbell Miller and Harris Good, Matthew Willis and Jacob Munoz. Just so kind of them. Just go 92, 93, 94, 95 right across the line for us. Let's see if they can make a play here. It's going to be Van Hoos sneaking out to the outside and then corner coming up to make the initial hit and then the rest of that defensive line shifting over quickly and they're going to keep that to a minimal gain it's going to be a one yard gain now third and nine yeah it looked like van hoos might have been able to break a little bit there but he ran into his own man chad mcgonnell right there receiver trying to come up with a block but didn't wouldn't, work out. Would not be surprised if Hendricks keeps this one on the ground here. Third and nine from the five. Keep it on the ground and punt it away if you can't get enough on the first down. But they line up in four wide. They have liked to throw it on third and third and long. So, yeah. Got to watch out for the holding in the end zone. And it seems like they escaped that. The outlet pass to Van Hoos. He's going to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that will be it. So, they avoided disaster there, and, and I say that you've got to be careful because a holding call in the end zone is a safety, and you punt it away anyway. And we'll see what the Tiger returner can do standing at his 50. It's going to be Chris Stewart off screen, and you see that right there. He's got the back heel on the edge of the green. 
and Trinity struggled with a punt, went over his head, so can't have that happen if you're Hendricks here. Jackson Sinclair gets it away cleanly. This one will be fielded at the 43, and he's got room to go. Stewart turns the corner up to the 30, now the 25. We'll see. Tucker Horn or Wyatt Messix. Looks like it's going to be Tucker Horn. And just too short of a punt, I think, for the defenders to get. I mean, it didn't hang up in the air nearly as much as they needed it to. It just made it a quick transition there for Charles Davis. Or, yeah, Charles Davis. I'm sorry, Chris Stewart. Messix is back out there as quarterback. He's going to take off on the first play. He was getting into a rhythm on the last drive just before that costly interception, but you mentioned he was making better reads off the run pass option and the most comfortable he's looked all day. So I agree with the decision to keep him in here, hopefully get some momentum. That'll do it for the third quarter. We head to the fourth. And Hendricks scored in the first 90 seconds. And that's been it for the scoreboard. So took a quick break. We'll be back in just a bit here on the Tiger Network where it's Hendricks 6, Trinity looking to take the lead right outside the end zone at the 26 going in. We'll be back in just a bit. Tiger defense holding Hendricks to just 10 yards of offense there in the third quarter. And now we see a change of quarterback. It's Tucker Horn in. And that's got to be something. I mean, he made contact. Whether or not he was drawn off sides or came over on his own, and it's a neutral zone infraction. Let's see what they say. Neutral zone infraction. So... Set the Tigers up. Second and four, five? Yeah, five. Merrifield to the right of your screen. Stewart just inside. Crawford at the very top. And it's Edmondson taking the corner. Bounces around, dips under, and I think he only got three. That should bring up a third and two. Maybe the most important play of the game coming up right here for Trinity. And likely four down territory as well. Possibly. And that is a timeout coming here for Coach Jeremy Urban. His first of the game. Timeout. First Three. of the half. So that will be 14.31 on the clock. Look at some of the numbers here. Only 47 yards passing for the Tigers, and they've got seven completions and four picks. Just really has not gone, has not gotten going on the passing side of things. And Mike Edmondson's 15 for 104, and then everybody else that's run the ball has negative rushing yards. The team as a total has 25 carries for 60 yards. It means the rest of the team is 10 for negative 44. And just dismal offensive day for the Tigers. On the flip side, though, Hendricks, 
Miles Thompson, 13 of 24, 176 yards. But Jacob Woods, four carries, 21 yards, and his first one of the day was the one that got him into the end zone on a one-yard run. And that has been the story on the scoreboard. That's Tucker Horn back there with Edmondson. And we'll see what happens here on third and two. Edmondson gets it. He's up the middle. And that's enough for a first down. And the Tigers continue to threaten now down to the 14. Josh, if you had read those numbers and you were not watching this game and you didn't tell anybody the score, I think you'd assume the Tigers were down by a lot more than they are. So to be down still just 6 nothing with a chance to score right here, I think Coach Urban and the Tigers have to be thrilled. They'll have to be thrilled for sure. And Hendricks fans are probably sitting at home thinking easily should be up 28, if not 35 nothing at this point. Their defense has played well. Their offense has played well but has struggled inside the red zone. Horn to his right, now runs to his left. He's got daylight to the sideline at the five, and he dips out at the four for a first down, and it'll be first and goal. No, wait. Dips out at the five, so it'll be second and one here for the Tigers. And maybe an even better play by Horn to dip out short of the first down marker. That means that they get they need one yard for a first down and can still try to push forward and have another couple of plays to get into the end zone if they need. And Horn is not typically a running quarterback. He only has one rushing yard on the year on four carries. Messick's is usually the one that runs, but showing some good moves there. Merrifield, with the defender step for step. And if you're gonna throw that, you almost have to throw that backside and let Merrifield go behind the defender for it because if he tries to fight over the top of him, defender's got the position. Throw it backside, he's, defender's got to hold off Merrifield and it's basically gonna be pass interference. So third and two, it's third and one. The scoreboard is way off. That's, that's barely six inches over there. Third and short. Tigers going to throw it again. There it is, the backside throw. Exactly what we just talked about, and it's going to be a completed pass down to the one-yard line. And that's the difference right there. You throw it to his backside, and the defender can only fight through, and his only play really is to... So no foul. Results of the play is first down. Defender can only fight through, and, and the best that they can do is, is let it be caught. If they try to defend it too much, they're probably going to be called for pass interference. Whereas if it's on the front side, they don't even have to turn around. They don't have to change position. They're not going to hold a defender cutting back across themselves. So here we go. Trinity, 12-37, looking to tie the game with the touchdown. Edmondson, and he's, I believe, in. No, he's down at the one. And they're already at the one. He's down at the, maybe the 12 inch line. You can see the Tigers on the sideline itching for Edmondson to get in. Tigers want to score so, so badly. Great call from the officiating crew, marking it down short of the goal line. And now Tucker still in shotgun formation. Second and goal. Edmondson again. Cuts through and he's probably going to lose a little bit. And he's coming up shaky on the shoulder. An official timeout and he made just a little bit of a stinger. Head athletic trainer Mark Powell. Walk off. Edmondson will be out for a play. It's third and goal. And then Hendricks, they've been looking for a defensive stand all game. Haven't had much of an opportunity. They got the interception moments ago in the last possession as the Tigers are threatening to score. 
Now their first real test. They've done their job on the first two plays. With the ball on the one here, and it looks like Horn is, yeah, calling a timeout with the play clock running down to just two seconds. This is a huge play, so Trinity needs to think it over, get their best play going. And with 11.21 left to play, we'll take the timeout with them. We'll be back in just a bit here on the Tiger Network. Trinity Tigers, just 123 yards of offense today. But they only need one more to make this a tie game. And here we go, third and one. Third and goal from the one. Charles Davis in the backfield. Hendricks bench making some noise. Of course, no fans, so got to create their own energy. All huddled near the goal line. That one's going to be low. we got a false start. And Trinity's going to need quite a few more yards. Yeah, and I mean, could have made a difference, that noise. First time all game, really, you could hear some semblance of what would be crowd noise on a third down, a big play of the game, and results in a false start for the Tigers. Well, as we said, presumably this was two down, or four down territory, two plays here from third down. side still going at it he switches over to the right side Stewart top of the screen Burton is in set another roll to the right and that one's out of the reach of Crawford this is a tough decision I, I don't know what I would do here if you just take the three points or Go for it on fourth. Well, if it were seven nothing, I think you're going for it. But with it being six nothing, I think you take the three because you never know where you might end up with the ball again. And if you can kick three here and then kick three later, you've got a chance. PJ Hensley. Set is down. The kick is nice and through. We finally have a a made kick today. And that is 6-3 on the scoreboard. And P.J. Hensley puts the Tigers on the board for the first time. Hendricks will not be getting the shutout. And defense getting a little bit of rest. The Hendricks offense also getting a little bit of rest. So we'll see how that may change things. As we go forward, but as tempting as it can be to go forward in that situation, I do think they made the right decision. Now you have points on the board, and that could just psychologically mean a lot for the team to finally see something up there. And the defense has been playing so well that now they can see, okay, our effort has been rewarded with points, and now let's keep it going. Eleven minutes left in the game. Let's come up with a couple more big plays and bring it home. And I think it gives you hope at the end of the tunnel, too. Closing minutes of the game, if you only need three as opposed to six. You know, see if you know, you're, Both defenses have been playing well enough that I feel like both would say, I'm happy to take this to overtime and take our chances. Hensley kicks off. He kicks off fairly deep. He's going to take the turner back to the two-yard line. And he's got a ton of room. And still on his feet and still going and finally taken down at midfield. Turn by Carter Weekly, the defensive back who was called for the personal foul earlier. 
atoning for that with a huge return to help set up the offense. Number 22, Tanner Barrett for Hendricks had a key block right there opening things up. And that's big, big for the Warriors. Starting on exactly the 50 yard line. This first year, Winston Hutchinson making the tackle for the Tigers. And I know that they had a defender or two still left behind that play, but with the way that Weekly was running there, almost felt like if he got past midfield there and if, if Hutchinson doesn't make that tackle, that one had the chance to go the distance. Miller giving chase, a little pitch and catch. That'll be right off the first down marker. Should be good for a first down. Not to Chad McGonigal. We've heard his name quite a few times today, and he comes up with another huge catch. And I think the other part of this story is if the defense does allow a field goal here to Hendricks, and Hendricks able to make it 9-3, still in that one possession game even if a field goal won't tie the game you, you still got a chance to to keep everything going positively for your for yourself so there might be some that question the idea of going for that field goal but I think at the end of the day it, it does make a lot of sense and Van Hoos finally breaks one open really the first time we've seen a good run I mean not coming from a quarterback. Van Hoos is long before that. He had nine for 11, as long as four. And that one, he's going to scamper for more than what he's had all game. A couple of Tigers. Maybe starting to feel the effects of the heat. Things are starting to roll in as we hit the noon time here in San Antonio. Not often you can say it's almost noon and we're already in the fourth quarter of a football game. Only 63 degrees, but a bit of a humidity today, and you know, this one's been pretty hotly contested. This game means a lot to both sides. Both Hendricks and Trinity are undefeated this year, and the winner of this game will clinch the West Division title in the Southern Athletic Association, and we'll head to the SAA championship game next week in Little Rock. I can tell you, Hendricks is excited for that one. They're basically hosting the crossover tournament. And in doing so, they've got an opportunity to potentially win the SAA title in their home stadium. Or in their home state, at least. Travel down from Conway down to Little Rock. Trinity looking to make it a revenge tour against Barry. He's taken the last two. Trinity tied for the SAA championship last year. But Barry, with the head-to-head -head matchup, went to the playoffs. Trinity did not. And they ended the season on a seven-game win streak. They've picked up two to start the spring season here. And... Well, technically, that makes nine wins in a row, and that's good for second currently in Division Three. And we're behind the champions. North Central having won 12 in a row to end the year and claim the 2020 title. And, of course, all the teams that had won a lot of games last year missed the playoffs or, or made the playoffs and then got beat in the playoffs. Thompson fires that one out, and another great catch once again by Hinton. That was a great catch right there. Throw was a little bit off, but Hinton was able to pull it in, make it a manageable, very manageable, manageable third down. Eight forty-two and counting down. I think this is about as close as we thought this game should be, and we definitely did not think it'd be six-three at this point. Definitely not. Both defenses outshining the good offenses that both teams have. And it's a all important third down and well, it's so important in fact that it is worth taking a timeout here. Time out. First of the half here for Hendricks. And they will talk this one over on third and two. We'll take a quick break with them and we'll be right back here on Tiger Network.
8.22 left to play here from San Antonio. 8.22 plus maybe some untimed downs and overtime depending on how this one will finish. Hendricks facing a third and two at their own 19 yard line. Thompson will give to Van Hoos and he's got the first down and more and he's got six. No, he fumbled through the end of the end zone. That could be a touchback. And they are going to say he was down before he lost control. We'll have to see that again from our angle. Oh my Van Hoos almost breaking this one for six and then almost disaster for Hendricks. They roll him down. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, he was down. Good call. The officials have been spot on, and look who it is again. Jacob Wood taking it to the outside, and he's got his second touchdown of the day. And 7.45 to go. A pair of one-yard touchdowns for Jacob Wood and Hendricks. What feels like a commanding 12-3 lead now. Still, I mean, there is a lot of time left, particularly for, I mean, both of these offenses, when they are normally playing, I mean, there's still time for each team here to have two or three more possessions the way that they typically play. And back to live action. The extra point is up and through. And that'll make it a 10-point lead here for the Warriors. So they said possibility for the Tigers to get a few more possessions. They're going to need at least two. They trail by 10, 7.43 left to play here in the fourth. And we'll take a quick break and join you back here in just a minute on the Tiger Network. Hendricks with the touchdown. Jacob Wood with a pair now. And five carries for 22 yards. Two touchdowns on the day for Wood. The long of 21. And they have been the two rushes that have made the impactful difference here on the scoreboard. The Hendricks Warriors defense doing everything that they need to keep the Trinity offense at bay. And this one's going to roll down. Finally picked up, and the Tigers will start at about the 37-yard line and turn. Uh, Justin Carmuch. So a must-score possession here for the Tigers, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown. Got to get this back to one score. Yeah, and you see Messick back, back out there. Apart from the first drive where he threw it down the field, we haven't really seen a lot of deep passes. And right there, starting the drive with a short screen pass that he is not able to complete to Chris Stewart. Might have to start opening up the offense. If you're the Tigers, seven and a half minutes. Like you said, it is plenty of time, but sooner or later they have to get going. And it's been a struggle, so sooner is the, the important word there. John Patrick Veal with the pass deflection. Second and 10, Messix. Short pass out to Burtness. His first catch of the day, and it's not gonna go for much, but maybe the start that the Tigers need. Bring up third and a long six. Say seven. And on that play, Messix is not facing any pressure, but he still is getting rid of it really quickly. So you have to wonder if, if he were to hold back a little bit and let the receivers get downfield, if he could make something bigger happen. Evanson back in there after being taken out on the last drive. 
go to Messick's left. A little bit of pressure, but he's able to scramble to his right. Now turn it upfield, and he's got a lot of room to run. Down past the 35, out to the 33. And just the threat of throwing the ball, opening up enough of a opportunity here for Messick's. He's a pretty good running quarterback, and you see him tuck it and take off. Now Edmondson back. That's going to be a face mask. No call. And, well, it doesn't matter anyway because they're going to take this first down. I'm right with you. I thought I saw the face mask right away, but maybe we're seeing something. And usually when the running back's head turns 90 degrees, it's usually a good indication of a face mask, but it didn't matter because Edmondson just powers on. He's powered up to 121 yards rushing on the day. 15-yard run. Now Messick's looking. End zone. And Crawford unable to escape the coverage. There goes Brimham again, the man who's got two picks already in this game. Six minutes to play. As we are just about what normal kickoff would have been, just past the noon hour here in the Central Time Zone. Edmondson fighting for a few more. And almost gets the entire first down on that run. It'll bring up third and one for Trinity. And Edmondson gets up a little slowly again. Last possession looked a little bit hurt, but he is not coming out of the game. He is going to fight through it. He's been the brightest spot for the Tigers offense so far today. Messick rolls to his right, cuts back, and he's got nowhere to go. He floats it up in the air, and that was a mistake. And that will probably seal the deal for Hendricks. And barring... What I would say at this point is going to have to be a miraculous comeback here for the Tigers. Could be sending Hendricks to the championship against Barry just down the road from their campus in Little Rock, Arkansas. And I mean, I understand what Mexico is trying to do. He's trying to make a play here, but you've got fourth down still available. And you throw it into just a group not really knowing what's going to come down with that and if nothing else I think it's it's deflating to the point where even if the Tigers have a couple of more possessions it's just at what point can you still continue to push and push and push and come away with nothing yeah, if the defense can get a quick turnover there would be a different story this one thrown out to the outside and scampering for a first down Yeah, you mentioned Messick's forcing that throw there. Not only was it third down, and they could have easily gone for it on fourth down, but with a 10-point ten deficit, could have also held back for the field goal, make it a one-possession game, and you're still down just a touchdown. And for Messick's, his 6 of 13, four picks, 40 yards. And Tucker Horn, just 3 of 7 for 15 yards and a pick. Tigers overall, 9 of 20, 55 yards, 5 INTs. Last catch by Colton Phillips for 10 yards, giving the Warriors a first down. And Van Hoos scampering ahead, and that's going to be another first down. And at this point, the clock just continues to tick down. Trinity with just the one timeout. And they'll be careful about when they choose to use it, but 13 to 3 here in San Antonio in favor of the away team. But right now the defense they've held and they've held all game and we've been waiting to see when is going to be that moment Hendricks breaks through. They got a touchdown on their last possession and now they've got two consecutive first downs. It looks like that defense is finally worn down. And this again pushing through meet him after about a three or four yard gain. Trinity will still play next week up in Arkansas. The crossover system still in play. Likely to play Birmingham Southern though. Who's currently the two spot out of the east side of things. I 
I think it is important to remember that this season has been unlike any other. We have football in March, nothing we've ever seen before, and the Tigers have gotten some good action so far. They're going to get to play a total of four games and hopefully jumpstart them for next year when we are hopefully back to a more normal fall season. As third down approaches, Coach Urban's going to take his final timeout. It'll be third and one. And, and I think to that point, too, I mean, this is, you know, three regular season, we'll say regular season games, and then the crossover game, which is basically just a, with the exception of the championship game where the SAA will crown their conference champion for the 2020-2021 season. The other games are just another, just an opportunity to play another week. And so when you look at it from that standpoint, the NCAA has granted a year of eligibility to all the players if they choose to use it. That'll affect some seniors who decide that I've already graduated or I've got the credits, I need to move on. Um, and schools that don't have graduate programs will probably suffer a little bit more than those who do. But for a lot of these guys, this is a just an opportunity to, to, you know, instead of just coming out here in the spring and, like you said, maybe just having spring ball for an extended spring ball, say maybe they say, oh, you can play for three months, spring ball. You get an opportunity to actually compete and play against other players and other teams and kind of put yourself into the game situations. And so it's a free four games on the schedule. You know, and, and at the end of the day, you know, the coaches have definitely been evaluating players in game situations and looking at it from that standpoint. So, so you know, even if it's not a successful endeavor to go 4-0, and it's still a great season. And that one is going to be close on the spot. Line judge coming in. I think he had a good look at it. Where is he going to mark? And that looks good enough for the first down, or are they going to measure? They're going to say first down, so. No timeouts left, 3.03 and counting down. And at this point, a couple of runs, and I think Hendricks has is, is wound this one down. So even with the loss, it's, you know, you're looking at the opportunity. You were gifted four games. I guess not gifted. You know, you had ten games taken away from you. But gifted four games for the spring. And I'd say that a fairly decent job by the SAA schools to, you know, make it through protocols and, and be able to compete, go through testing, and you know we look at it on the on the basketball side. A couple of teams already losing their playoff games because they couldn't get through testing. And as that one's going to be broken through, and another first down, and that one could just about seal it. And that was Phillips on the run. Hendricks coaching staff right next door to us is completely fired up. But, uh, you know, the basketball situation in the SCAC where, you know, a couple of teams both having COVID issues this week and then that was the end of the season for one of them. The other team gets another week to test and, and see what happens. Um, Tiger Network for Trinity fans interested. We will have first round SCAC men's basketball coverage for you tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Men host Shriner in the first round, the number one seed Tigers. Currently sitting at eight and one on the season, looking to continue their eight game win streak. We talked about the Tigers nine game win streak here at the football field. That's gonna come to a close today. And they'll get a chance to start up a new streak next week over in Arkansas. And Hendricks will be playing for the coveted SAA title. We'll have soccer at 1 o'clock tomorrow as well. Trinity women's soccer taking on Southwestern. That will be the first home game. And a couple of handshakes across the line. Yeah, we are just extremely fortunate here at Trinity after everything that's gone on to have all 18 sports get the chance to play this spring. So with football coming to a close next week after the crossover games, we still have a ton of action going on, which you can catch right here at the Tiger Network. We have our top-ranked volleyball team in the entire country. They lost to Colorado College last night, but they're back in action today up in Colorado. Josh mentioned the men's basketball team is in action tomorrow in the SCAC tournament. 
the women's team won yesterday by 50 points against Southwestern to advance to the next round of their SCAC tournament. So overall, a lot of great action from our view right here. We can see action on the tennis courts. So just... And the women starting their home season. That one live on Tiger Network now. A couple of uh, the men's players calling the action for us. Yeah, something always happening here at Trinity's campus. So, and I'd like to take a moment here to thank our student staff helping run football, not just with Tiger Network, but just everywhere. The, <laughs> the uh, pretty much all of the help that you see on the sidelines and everything else, a lot of students taking part in this. And it's, you know, usually you've got outside members that come in to help with, you know, game day productions and some stuff like that. But with all the protocols in place, it's it's got to be people who are already on campus and already testing and, and just a tremendous job by all of the student staff that's stepped up in their jobs. And you know, particularly, I, I'd like to say with our, our role here with Tiger Network and the great job that students like Brian and, and all the rest have done. We've got quite a few back in the control room with Morgan and Chung and and then on cameras with, with Katie and Sam running the show for us. So so huge thanks to all of you guys. And and then thanks to all the fans who tune in and watch. I mean, we'd, uh, we'd love to have this be a full house here with, you know, Hendrix bringing their fans in and everything else. And we can't wait to get back to that as soon as we can. But uh, for the time being, we're just happy to have you and happy to be able to bring you coverage of these games. And the kneel down by Miles Thompson will do it. Trinity falling to two and one on the year, and Hendricks keeping hope alive for that SCAC, or SAA, excuse me, SAA championship. And they will, well, let's just say it, they're going to host Barry next weekend, and that one should be a lot of fun. I know they're going to allow fans into War Memorial Stadium up in Little Rock, and that is a huge stadium and should be a lot of fun. And I think we're going to get great action for the SAA crossover. It should be a lot of fun. And I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in today. Um, you know, 13 to 3, it, it was a weird game in a lot of ways. But I think it was, it felt like a, like an old style football game. And, you know, for maybe f for some of us older generations, it, it, it just felt like a great match. And, um, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get to see some more offense out of these two teams. And good news is, is both teams will play again next week. Yeah, definitely. We expected a close game, but I don't think we could have ever expected such a low scoring game from these two explosive offenses. But nonetheless, it was an exciting matchup. A lot of plays that kept us on the edge of our seats. And I know both sidelines, coaches all around here were excited throughout the game, close to the final whistle. Um, but it's been great to be here with you, Josh. And Looking forward to seeing what the Tigers can do next week in the crossover game. Yeah, so we're going to stay with you for just a bit. The Tigers are going to do the alma mater here at the end. So we'll have that for you in just a moment. We'll take a quick break until then. And uh, for those interested in seeing that, we'll be here in just a second. And uh, for the rest of you, thanks for tuning in and have a great rest of your weekend. <laughs> 